first thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it real quick, because uh, this isn't an Illustrator tutorial, but I want to show you the quick and easy way to get your uh, patterns or whatever into layers into Lightburn. This is what I do. So let me share my screen. And here we have the multicam pattern, and it's just a, a multicam pattern that is downloaded from the interwebs. And as you can see, there's all kinds of different colors in this pattern. So what I like to do is basically mimic the light burn layers. So if you have black, blue, red, green, yellow, whatever that is, orange, I'll select the pattern and then go to your little uh, color wheel for recolor artwork. And then change these to exact. Then you can go through and start recoloring them. So let's say this color or this particular part of the pattern you want to be on the black layer or hopefully import to a color close to it, then change it to black. This one, if you want red, then just start changing your color to red or blue or whatever. So just continue with those steps. changing the colors to whatever you want to match a particular layer that's down here in Lightburn. Then once the, you get to a point where you're satisfied and the colors are distinct enough from each other that you can recognize them, once you import them into Lightburn, main thing you want to do is expand. So expand your object and then hit on your Pathfinder, hit trim. So that'll separate everything out and you won't have duplicate lines, and duplicate shapes. So I'll trim, then just for good measure, I'll hit merge and we should be good to go. So I already have one prepped and that was included in the download for the live stream. So the, in the description of this video and in the comments, I put links to, link to my website where you get uh, the files at no cost to download and play with. So once you have this saved, at that point, we can go to Lightburn and import it. So if I wanted to go to the Multicam SVG and have it import it, it's going to import into layers that closely resemble the colors that we picked in Illustrator. So then you have this whole mess of multicam you can work with. Now that you have your whole mess of multicam here, if you don't do most of your design work in Illustrator or whatever program, what you can do is use a tool in Lightburn called Cut Shapes. So I don't want to destroy my original PMAG outline, so I'm going to make a copy of it. Control C, Control V. So then we have this outline that we can basically use as a cookie cutter and cut out whatever part of this camo we want. So when you select two objects to use the cut shapes tool, the second object acts as the cookie cutter and it is disposable. It will disappear after you use it. Just so you know that. So we want to select Multicam first. Then select your pattern, tools, cut shapes. Now, what we're going to have is a perfect PMAG with the vector pattern that we just imported. Then you can do the same with the opposite side if you wanted to grab a different part of the camo pattern to have it different. 
Or if you don't need it anymore, you just delete it. Make a copy of this one. Control C, Control V, and then mirror it, and you've got your other side. So it's that easy to get multi-layer uh, designs into Lightbird. If you make your collars somewhat similar to what's already in there, then they'll be easier to identify once you import them. If you had a specific, if you had specific settings set up and collars that you like to use. If not, then it doesn't really matter. There are let's see, those six blocks at the top and then one in the middle. And all those turn out a different shade, a different color, using my settings with my laser. Remember that, my settings with my laser. Yours will likely be different, but they should be in the ballpark. So I developed these settings with a 50 watt Rakus with a 175 millimeter lens. So 50 watt, 175. Check in. Alistair Creevy. Creevy. I probably said that totally wrong. But thanks for joining. So with my library, I have. Uh, Let's see if I can get my little tool up here. My library, I have these colors uh, at the moment linked to the setting in the library. Otherwise, it can get really confusing when you have all the different layers and colors. So if I link it, then I can click on it and I'll know. If you have a test PMAG, you can run that little square there. and. Uh, at least see where your settings come out compared to mine. Let's go ahead and run this square that's in the middle. And that is, so it's linked to the, uh, the bright setting, which is a 5,015.50 line interval of 0 0.05. Oh, still have some junk on it. This is one, uh, this axe head is a multicolor and multi-layer. That's something I would cover in the future in a training course or Patreon or something like that. All right, there's a PMAG. There's an example of the focal sticks. There's three printed and they're adjustable. They have tongue and groove, so they lock together pretty well and they don't slide around. But uh, let's see. We're in focus there. And all right, and start. So that ran right over some test engraving. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty bright. Turn on some more light. Yep, that's what I have three computers and they basically they sync through Google Drive. Now I just wish they would sync uh, Windows would sync fonts between PCs. That'd be awesome. I named this collar Smooth Collar. Oh yeah, I have no idea what it is, but I'm gonna run it and find out what it is. So let's frame that. I'll take you back over to the laser. <laughs> you find a blank spot. No, eh, that's not too bad. One thing you find with PMAGs is certain settings, more passes you run, the lighter they get. So let's run this a couple more passes, uh, same file, or same setting, just more passes. Yeah, can't really 
count that's a little lighter or not. Maybe. But here's um, an example of different collars from different settings on that PMAG. And all those variations came from just making tweaks to the settings that are in the file that uh, is available to download. Whether you're tweaking the interval or you can tweak the speed, uh, power, combination of all of them, it, you just have to play around and see what works best for your laser. So on this PMAG um, outline that I have, so I'm just going to wipe those out. And we're going to start with this. Now, the beauty of light burn is if you happen to delete your outline, you don't want this whole camo pattern being framed when you're just trying to line up a magazine. If you're new to light burn versus easy CAD, it's the frame option, you can do the whole. Let me show you on the screen. Oh, if I would turn off frame individually. Yeah, there we go. All right, now you can see my framing is a little off there. So in Lightburn, it does have live framing, so you can use the same nudge values that you have set in the regular settings to uh, start moving your line up and down and speeding all over now there's I'm just framing the contour of the exact outline over there all right so the laser i'm using is this smart 2 by newer laser it is obviously far away from a desk and seat over there so uh wireless keyboard and live framing help whenever you're, you're kind of far away from your laser that way you can just carry your keyboard over hit your arrows and make sure you're lined up where you need to be that's close enough there are different ways we can do this what I'm going to do is the black layer is I'm not going to show it and I'm not going to output it. So I'm going to turn those off. So right here under output and show, I'm going to untick those boxes. So that will just be left black, the native color of the PMAG. So that's our first color. Then we can go through and pick what we think will look best. The green this is totally up to uh the individual. I want to go with a bright tan for the green. What I'll do is if I get confused on what color is which layer because of my color blindness, I'll just untick the show box and then Show it, unshow it. So I know which one for sure I'm looking at. Then I'm just going to link the tan bright to the green layer. So now we do want to output that blue layer. So let's assign it a color and turn on output. And to ensure that none of this stuff gets uh, accidentally output, I'm going to move it outside of the work area. Something else that I always have turned on is cut selected that way if I don't select it it's not going to output it to the laser 
the blue would probably be, let's do the medium tan for the blue. That'll take care of any tan colors. And next we'll head to layer number eight, and it is not in our magazine, so we can just, uh, I'm going to uncheck those boxes, that way I won't look at it again. Same for layer 29. Next is the tool layer, then we have our teal. That encompasses a good bit of the magazine. Let's make that medium gray and link it so I don't get confused. We have our red. Let's make that uh, medium brown. Then layer 23. Let's do a lighter gray. Five colors we're going to add to the PMAG. Then if we add in the black that it already is, that will be a six color PMAG. So there's really only one thing left to do is uh, send it. Let's get over to the laser camera. And we'll watch and see what happens. But first, let's check chat again real quick. All right, Tyler's back. Thanks for joining us, Tyler. Looks like we're framed and ready, so let's go. It's always fun to watch light burns flood fill and just see how it decides where it's going to go. Something else I'm impressed with is the fan that came with that NOAA laser. It looks like uh, the um, AC Infinity 6-inch inline fans. But that thing's split off to two different fours, and uh, it's mounted next to my garage door, and it seems to suck all the fumes out with no problem. All right, so there's color number three. I lost count. Where we're at, but it says it is done. 